Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a quick teardown of my Goal Zero Yeti 1000 Lithium just to see what's inside. Let's do this thing. So getting into the unit is surprisingly easy. You just need a four millimeter metric hex wrench and we're going to use that to loosen the four bolts on the top of the unit that are holding down the two green handles. Now, these bolts are really high quality. They seem to be stainless steel and they're quite easy to get out. I don't think they're using Loctite or anything on them. So you just spin them out and you can see what they look like here. And there you go. The next step is to just wiggle the green handles a bit and you'll see they pop right out. Uh, the handles actually are made of really high quality plastic. They're very beefy. Maybe they're ABS plastic. Uh, and once the handles are out of the way, we're ready to open up the unit. So all you got to do is just gently tip the front up and you'll start seeing the insides. And the cover is actually connected because there is a really heavy duty set of wires that lead up to the extension port. In my case, I have the MPPT uh, charge controller in there. So um, you're going to want to lay the cover down somewhere uh, unless you want to disconnect those wires. So looking around, well, there's a lot of wires, right? So it's a little confusing, but you'll notice that they have these Anderson power pole connectors here. Um, these ones in my hands right now, the red and black are the main ones that go to uh, the unit itself. And then there is a set that goes for the DC plugs, for the USB plugs, and there's another set of connectors for the AC. So um, there's lots of connectors here going to the front panel and all the different ports. And um, if we look here in the back, that's really where the inverter is, I believe. So all of these capacitors and inductors and the heatsink, this is the inverter. And I'm imagining the charge controller is either here or in a level below. I did not take this apart because, well, it's a rat's nest. Uh, it's worth noting that this is an area that's very dangerous. So anywhere you see a lot of capacitors and you see AC power, you do not want to touch that unless you know what you're doing. And well, I don't. So I'm going to leave that stuff alone. Uh, there's very large heat sinks here on the inverter, which is a good sign. So there's two really long uh, aluminum heat sinks. And then cooling duty is provided by this pair of fans at the top that basically push and pull the air through. So there's really good airflow. Next thing is we want to flip this over and take a look at the battery. So there's a bunch of small Phillips head screws at the bottom. You got to take those all out in order to take off the bottom panel. And just like the top bolts, these screws also seem to be really high quality stainless steel. So again, very impressed with the quality of fasteners that they use in this unit. So we'll go ahead and take all the rest of the screws out in super high speed because that's a pretty boring thing to watch, isn't it? All right, so now that all the screws are out, you can simply lift the bottom panel right off. And if we flip it over, it's kind of interesting. There are these uh, metal retaining clips in the corners. And I think what that's for is they're actually tapped out. And so if we flip this back over, you can see that there is a way here to connect this. So I think the idea here is that you could use that to bolt this down to say the floor of your van, which is kind of a cool feature. I didn't know that even existed. So now we have access to the battery itself. On the right hand side here, you can see the positive and negative terminals. And those are using very, very beefy wire with two screws holding them down. And the battery itself is actually held down with a number of Phillips screws here. So we're going to go ahead and unscrew all of these. Uh, it's also a good idea when you're working on something electronic like this, if you can use insulated tools. So this is an insulated uh, set of screwdrivers. So if I did accidentally hit something, I hopefully won't get electrocuted. And I decided to leave the positive and negative terminals connected to see if I could actually just see enough of the battery uh, to answer some questions. I really didn't want to deal with it, honestly. You can see the lithium ion cells poking in there. Um, and if we wiggle this out a bit, uh, you can get a better view of the battery. And when you do, you'll immediately see this little bundle of cables here. This connects the battery BMS to the main controller. 
And I've heard from comments that this is also something Goal Zero recommends disconnecting and reconnecting if your Wi-Fi isn't working. So just another thing you could use when troubleshooting. And according to the label, this is manufactured by Icon Energy Systems in Shenzhen. Uh, it is a 10.95 volt battery, 96.2 amp hours, 1053.3 watt hours. So it's actually overrated. It's rated at a thousand watt hours. So there's a little bit extra there. And I researched Icon Energy System and honestly, it's really just hard to tell. It looks like they're just an OEM that builds stuff for all sorts of companies. I couldn't find any reference to Google Zero on their site or by Googling around. So I think it's just a contract battery company. And the next thing I wanted to do is figure out if I could actually find a replacement battery online. And so I went ahead and Googled the model number on this battery, but unfortunately, Google had never heard of it, so there were basically no results found for that particular model number. So I just don't think this is something that you can buy online, unfortunately. And I was hoping I could actually look at the labels on the individual cells, but the way they're put in here, um, you really can't read any of the labels or there aren't labels on them at all. So that's not really going to help us out at all. So uh, long story short, this battery is not something that you can just pick up on the web and get for yourself. Now I did find a random photo on the internet where somebody else had taken apart their Yeti and taken the cover off because they were braver than me. And you, this is a pretty good view of the BMS and you get another view of the batteries. And so basically, uh, Goal Zero said they were gonna sell replacement batteries, but essentially you gotta send the unit back to them. I don't think they're gonna ever sell batteries for this thing. Now, if you are a DIY person and you wanted to try this, uh, the battery itself is 12 inches by say eight and a half inches. And if you, the depth of it on the 1000 is about three and a half inches or so. The cool thing with these batteries is the 1400 and the 3000 uh, just have more layers of battery. So the batteries get a bit taller and the case gets a bit taller. And just like the top of the cabinet, there are a pair of fans on the bottom to also push and pull a good airstream through to keep the battery nice and cool. And so you can pull the covers off really easily. They're just sitting in a groove here and you can see the two stacked fans, one for electronics and one for batteries. And I think the thing that's super cool that I didn't appreciate until I took this apart is the entire body of these Yetis is one continuous extrusion of aluminum so it's super beefy it's really good for heat dissipation and then things like the corners and the covers for the fans slide into these perfect little openings in this extrusion and then they do a lot of things like tapping out so that they can insert screws and other kinds of fittings so just overall the amount of engineering and the quality of materials that go into these Yetis is way better than any of the plastic units that I've reviewed so far. So, you know, when people talk about the fact that Goal Zero is maybe a little more money than other things, they're not really taking into account the quality of the construction here, as well as things like the fact that everything is over-engineered and specified in a really conservative way. So these units are a lot more robust than some of the sort of cheaper units out there on the market. So I hope you found this was useful. Uh, I had never opened up my Yeti before this. So please leave a comment with questions or ideas or things you want me to look into. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe this video. I am on a roll and I'm gonna be making lots of videos. Thanks for watching.